everyone. Thank you all for um, tuning into this presentation. It's an honor to be presenting to you all today. Um, my name is Sneha Jiju, and I will be speaking on the topic of oncolytic virus therapy, which is an alternative treatment method that uses engineered viruses to fight cancer. But before I get into my presentation, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. So I'm currently a rising sophomore attending Basis Sawatuki in Phoenix, Arizona. As an advocate for women's rights and opportunities, I'm the president of my organization, Women United, where I run programs and a blog in order to create a community of girls empowering girls and specifically fight the gender disparity that exists in the field of entrepreneurship. Also, I'm currently conducting an independent research project in the area of cancer immunotherapy. And for the upcoming year, I'm a prospective member of the Public Health Youth Advisory Council in my county. At school, I participate in the varsity speech and debate team, a health leader and JHS chapter, and I'm also involved with the student, leader, student leadership society, as well as our ambassador and tutoring programs. In my free time, I'd say I love to work on creative writing and volunteering. And in the future, I hope to continue my work in research and potentially go into pediatric oncology. Now, I'd like to start off my presentation by emphasizing just how devastating cancer is as a globally burdening disease. In the year 2020, cancer caused over 9.9 .9 million deaths, accounting for nearly one in six deaths around the world. Around 70% of these deaths occurred in low and middle income countries. The World Health Organization acknowledges that the effective management of cancer relies on early detection, accurate diagnosis, and access to appropriate multimodal therapy. But a major issue is that a lot of low and middle income countries don't have access to the resources needed to fulfill these standards. With the global cancer burden expected to increase to 28.4 million cases in 2040, which is a 47% increase from 2020, uh, many researchers have turned their attention to developing accessible and functioning treatment methods. Now, the treatment method that I wanted to discuss today often tends to raise a lot of eyebrows because it essentially tries to use a universally disliked infectious agent, viruses, to fight a whole other disease, cancer. So to get the audience a little less ambivalent about this form of cancer therapy, I'd like to share a recent success story that shows the life-saving impact that oncolytic viruses could have as a potential treatment method. So in the country of Venezuela, there's a young boy named Felix who was unfortunately diagnosed with bilateral retinoblastoma when he was only a few months old. And this happens to be the most common eye tumor in children. And so at two years old and having already lost sight in one of his eyes, Felix was taken to a local children's hospital in Barcelona where doctors were able to deactivate his tumors using a chemotherapy treatment. But only eight months later, he had a relapse and his cancer became resistant to standard treatment. Uh, but luckily, he was then able to be admitted into a clinical trial involving BCN01 oncolytic virus, which is a derivative of adenovirus. And thanks to this treatment, cancer continues to be in complete remission and his salvaged eyesight allows him to grow and thrive as a young kid. But now you're probably wondering how these oncolytic viruses work against cancer. So OVs can be found in nature or genetically modified in the lab, and they essentially target an individual's immune, uh, cancer cells and then notify the immune system uh, that something is wrong and action must be taken. And so there are three main reasons why oncolytic viruses are effective. Firstly, cancer cells often have impaired antiviral mechanisms that make them more susceptible to infection. When normal cells are infected by a virus, they turn on a genetically controlled cell death pathway that prevents the viral infection from spreading, so they can effectively kill the virus. But when it comes to cancer cells, they have already turned off this pathway during development, and therefore they're more vulnerable to infection by a virus. And this impairment is what we try to exploit in oncolytic virus therapy. Um, second, natural viruses can be engineered to give them advantageous properties, including decreasing their ability to infect normal cells. So the goal with oncolytic viruses is to have them focus in on only infecting tumor beds and then working to instigate a larger immune response that eliminates cancer systemically in an organism. 
And third, after oncolytic viruses find and infect cancer cells, they can cause these cells to burst, thus killing the cells and releasing cancer cell antigens. These antigens can then stimulate immune responses that seek out and eliminate cancer cells that are nearby or potentially anywhere else in the body. Moving to the history of oncolytic virus therapy, uh, it began around the mid 1800s and this was before scientists even understood what viruses were or how they function, but they started recognizing that individuals with infectious diseases sometimes saw their tumors shrink. Uh, early case reports emphasized regression of cancers during naturally acquired viral infections, and this soon provided the basis for the first clinical trials involving oncolytic viruses. Uh, most often, the viruses were arrested by the host immune system and failed to impact tumor growth. But sometimes, in immunosuppressed patients, infection persisted and patients went into brief periods of clinical remission. Then in the late 1800s, so although the years leading up to the 20th century are traditionally considered the beginning of modern medicine, uh, there were no notable advancements in the treatment of malignant diseases, and oncolytic virus therapy specifically was not showing much promise due to cancer remissions being short-lived and varying heavily based on the patient and the type of cancer. But then in the 1950s and 1960s, this is when uh, understanding of viruses accelerated rapidly due to the advent of rodent models for testing, as well as new methods of examining virus propagation ex vivo or out of the body. And so during these years, viruses were being studied with such intensity that their biology was understood more thoroughly than several other organisms in nature. And because of this, uh, researchers were able to develop new methods to manipulate virus genome sequences and convert them into anti-cancer agents. So some of the most effective cancer treatment methods come from combination therapies. Oncolytic virus therapy could be used in combination with other treatments like chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and cancer immunotherapies in order to target a wider range of tumors with increased effectiveness. And a common example is the use of oncolytic viruses with immune checkpoint inhibition. Uh, a simplified description of how this works is that uh, firstly, oncolytic viruses notify the immune system that something is wrong and then attract immune cells to the tumor microenvironment. And then in, uh, checkpoint inhibitor drugs help in, inform immune cells that cancer cells are unhealthy and abnormal and need to be eliminated. Now, a major issue with a lot of cancer treatment drugs is that most of these drugs cannot kill off all of the cancer cells in an individual. So the remaining cancer cells continue to grow and metastasize, and over time, they become resistant to the drugs used against them. But oncolytic viruses can combat this issue by uh, stimulating a large immune response that eliminates cancer systemically in an organism. But like other therapeutic strategies, oncolytic virus therapy with its own set of challenges. And currently, researchers have turned their attention to two main priorities. Firstly, ensuring that oncolytic viruses can steer clear of a body of an organism's healthy cells in order to minimize damage done to the body. And second, preventing oncolytic viruses from being affected by the body's antiviral immune response, which could potentially decrease the effectiveness of this therapy as a whole. Now, I wanted to mention that the reason why I was first intrigued by oncolytic virus therapy as a treatment method for cancer was the thought that if you could introduce a virus to a specific tumor bed and have it infect and kill every last cancer cell, then the patient will be cancer free and the job is done. But it turns out it's not that simple and there are still hurdles that researchers are working to overcome. But still, with the number of oncolytic viruses that are being accepted into clinical trials and showing satisfactory results, researchers are beginning to truly believe that we have a new era of cancer treatment at dawn. And so with further research and funding, oncolytic viruses could be brought in to target a wider range of cancers with increased effectiveness. And so with that, here are the references I use for my presentation. Uh, for my acknowledgements, I firstly wanted to thank the Global Health Leaders Conference for providing such an amazing platform for students to share and present on their passions. 
Uh, also a big thank you to Professor Grant McFadden at ASU uh, for supporting me in my research, meeting up with me and clearing up a bunch of my questions. His assistance really helped me in constructing this presentation uh, to my family, especially to my father for their endless support throughout this entire process and to you, the audience for taking the time to listen. Uh, but other than that, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. They could be about this presentation or my research in general. Um, but I hope everyone was able to learn something from my presentation and thank you all for tuning in. Mm.